I took the same exam that you took, and I should be entitled to all the rights and privileges of a member of this department. I am sure that up on the hill, they were very close. Remember, since all firemen are close, you get closer yet when you only work in one station all of your time on the job. Land development, coupled with prejudice, would end the company's time on the hill. They started building Belmont High School across the street, directly across the street from the station. It was unthinkable in 1924 to have colored firemen looking at white girls in their gym clothes. So they had to move them off the hill. Chief Ralph J. Scott and the department saw the appropriate home of the all-black company in the Central Avenue area of Los Angeles. Integration came along. We had our own funeral hall. The Robert Funer home was just on the other side of that fence, right here on Central Avenue. We had uh, uh, sweet shops. We had uh, barbecue stations, a lot of little uh, black-owned businesses. They tell me that before 1918, Central Avenue, or before 1912, Central Avenue was all Jewish. And then we moved. Now, when I moved to Los Angeles, Jefferson and Arlington was the heart of the Jewish community. And then they sold the houses to us, and they moved out to uh, Fairfax, Third and Fairfax. But in each case, it was the Jewish community that first gouged us with rent, but then were willing to sell to us when the uh, uh, regular community would not sell to us. And Central Avenue became our street. During the World War II, when uh, the jazz bands, uh, Ellington, and, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the one before, uh, Jimmy Lunsford, and uh, Cab Calloway, and all those bands, you couldn't hardly get a seat at the uh, uh, black clubs along the avenue because all the stars were there. This black enclave did not exist by choice. When the Goodyear plant came into being, they brought a lot of Midwesterners out. And the Midwesterners brought their bias and prejudice with them. And they put restrictive covenants in all of the property south of Slauson. And that's why the black community then had to move over to Compton and go south to Watts. They couldn't go straight down Central Avenue. Between Slauson and about 100 and, or no, about 96, no black could live in those days. It was strange now. When Roger Duncan, one of the seven black uh, Tuskegee Airmen that joined the department, while he was a fireman and he was, had earned his wings at Tuskegee, Tuskegee, he tried to buy a house on Dunsmuir, three blocks west of La Brea, between Adams and Washington. They dynamited it while it was in escrow to keep him from having it. Bob Craig came on shortly behind me, dared to cross St. Andrews on 35th Street on the west side. About a half a block, they burned a cross in his yard. He was opposite, if any of you are familiar with the west side, he was opposite the Jefferson, Li uh, Jefferson Library. The, the first street, they burned a cross in his yard for coming across. So we didn't like it, but we were used to segregation. The Los Angeles City Fire Department operated three stations in the Central Avenue community. In 1924, when they brought them down to Central, the chief first wanted to move them into 21s. That's down at 52nd Street, just east of Central. Blacks hadn't moved that far down Central. Remember I told you, they gradually moved south. They were somewhere between Washington and Adams at the time. So the white firemen stirred up the neighbors, and the neighbors squashed it. And that made the chief mad. He said, all right, I'll move them into 30s, because we had passed 14th Street. 
The white farmer says, you can't do that, chief. That's a double house. The niggers can't handle a hook and ladder. He said, move out. They've made him mad. When they moved out, they smeared human filth all over the kitchen walls, that building way in the back. He made them come back and clean it up. Station 30 was larger than 21. It also had more equipment to be manned, which created a unique opportunity. When they want to do something, they do it. Civil service had come in. They were moving into a double house. They went 350 names down to civil service list and picked out 16 colors to operate the A shift and the B shift of the hook and ladder. So while it was an insult to get moved off the hill, it turned out to be a benefit. It doubled our force. We had uh, an engine company and a truck company. As more blacks were hired, they were sent to Station 30, which made the spacious station cramped. We never had so many men that it endangered us in any way. Remember now, <laughs> we didn't have any cabs. We stood on the tailboard or on the running board. So you just move over a little bit and crowd in. And uh, <clears throat> then they, uh, they, they first gave us a salvage company. A salvage company is the company that uh, tries to protect the material, throwing salvage covers and sawdust and, and uh, directing the water. Then when we had too many men for that, then they brought in the heavy utility, the wrecker. Uh, and then they finally decided that uh, we still had too many men, so they started letting our men into fire prevention. But when I first came on the job, I applied for fire prevention, and it was off limits for us. And then after I got my law degree, I made an inquiry about uh, the arson unit, and that was off limits to us at that time. Captains found themselves in a universe where they reigned supreme. And the men would be cursing the captain while he was flirting with all the housewives up and down the street. But they were little gods. They couldn't go any higher, but they were there for life. And they couldn't, see, some white captains can retire and become the chief of some little town in uh, Modoc County. Our men couldn't do that. So our men just stayed on and on and on. They were there for good. They weren't going any higher. Captain Hall passed the battalion chief's list in 1931. They told him, Hall, it's a shame you're not a white man, but we have no place nor plan for a colored chief. And in fairness to the department, it takes four companies to make a battalion, and we only had two. So there really was no place for a colored chief, because it was unthinkable in 1931 to have a black captain over white firemen. 1936 saw Station 14 converted to an all-black company. Relieving overcrowding had very little to do with that conversion. They opened up the second station as a bait to the black community to support Mayor Frank L. Shaw. Now, that was a corrupt regime, but all the underhanded work was taken care of by Joe Shaw, his brother. But it was during his regime where people could buy their job, and uh, there was more to 14s being given to the black community. You see, not only did it mean about 10 more firefighters, but it opened up two more captain spots, A shift and B shift, the captain shots. And it's my understanding that Guy Bailey and Lawrence Washington, because of the payoffs, were appointed out of order over John Paul and Archie Woodyard. 